Hey everybody, this is Rob with Signway Specialties and today I'm going to show you a cool trick. We're going to start a series on little car tricks because my main focus at work is actually automotive electrical. So one of the things I'm going to show you that you can do as a car lover and enthusiast that can actually help you save a whole lot of money and know you got the right product. Today we're going to talk about tachometers. Right. Most of the time when you buy these things, you run into a whole cause and effect kind of deal where you have this drive to get your engine speed under control and you want to know how it works, but yet you don't know how to test it. These gauges, I'll show you. Why the gauge I got here today is an Equus backlit performance one. It's just, it's just a basic tachometer. You know, you've seen these things all the time. People are mounting them all up on the dash, six and a quarter inch gauge. The bigger the gauge, more horsepower, right? Bullshit. Okay, how can I tell? I mean, look at this. This thing's already sitting at like 1,200 or 1,300 RPM already. And some of these come with resistors. This one comes with a program button. And you cycle between four, six, and eight cylinder. Why is this a pain? Because most of the time, guys don't know if they got the right one. What they do is they get in there, they know what their idle speed is, plug in the tack and they hope the tack reads the idle speed that they know. Today I'm gonna to show you how to take something like a $30 multimeter that tests frequency, HZ, Hertz, looks like this. And that's gonna be on your dial and I'll show you a multimeter in a second here. How you can sit there and you can verify at all speeds of the engine that you actually have your tack set right. You have the right resistor, you have it plugged into the right port, everything is all stable on it, and you can verify all of this just by using a, fre a frequency reading off your multimeter. Now, how we're going to do this today is, once I find my eraser, is we got to cover a couple bases here. We're going to show you why certain things matter, okay? so. First off, what is tachometer like? What is a tachometer reading? Okay, so you got a intake, compression, power, exhaust stroke. That's why your engine in your car is a four-stroke. If it's two-stroke, you're on a dirt bike, you're in the wrong automobile, or you're in Britain. In that four strokes, what is happening is you get one spark for every two revolutions. In that time frame, what you're doing is you're getting a reading if you plug this into the coil. You're getting a spark because what it's going to do is it's going to go down, then it's going to go up, then it's going to go down, and then it's going to go up. That's what your piston is doing in one cylinder. Okay? And what you got is your intake stroke, your compression stroke, then you got your power stroke. Not to be confused with the dirty D. Then you got your exhaust stroke. Now what's happening is you're getting a spark right in this region. A little spark there. And what you're reading when you read per spark is you're reading two RPM. That's how I'm getting this right here. It's because you gotta go through one revolution and then another revolution. So technically we're at two RPM and we only fired one time. So how do we measure to make sure that our tachometer is reading this the way it's supposed to? How it's doing this, or how you're gonna do this, let's say you have an inline four cylinder, right? You have four piston sleeves, bores, whatever you wanna call it. This is the upper view of your block without the head on it. You have a spark plug in there. Each spark plug is going to come out and either one of two things is going to happen to that spark. You're either going to have individual coil packs that will run to each cylinder or you're going to have a single coil and that's going to run all four cylinders by itself. Now there's two ways to test this thing. Up here, most of the time what you're going to have is you're going to have a sense line 
a ferretic ground, and you're gonna have the spark line. Okay, you're gonna have three wires or more, you may have five. Or you're gonna have this down here, and all this is gonna have is a power and a ground and a trigger wire so you can kick the spark to each place. Now, if you have these, which is most likely because I'm catering this more to your tuner guys. You young bucks out there trying to do your high power skylines, things like that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to go over here and you're going to take your multimeter and you're going to test frequency at one of these points. At idle, you should be somewhere, somewhere between 15 and 25 hertz. If you're not, you're, yeah, you're running a little bit high. So we'll call it. We'll actually say you should be somewhere between 5 hertz and 25 hertz. When you figure out that you got that, you know you're in the right spot. And it's going to be on one of these three wires right here. Depending on your car, it could be the center, it could be the far right, it could be the left. It, it's hard to say. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your multimeter. You're going to want to take that black lead and you're going to want to put it at ground. Okay? You're going to take that red lead, leads or wires, and what you're going to do is you're going to want to take that little probe that's on there and you're going to want to put it to one of those wires on your coil pack. Alright? Ground is anything steel. Not on your, not on your strut center bolt or anything like that because that's all rubber mounted. It's insulated. But you're going to want to put this on the body somewhere say a bolt holding the firewall together, the engine down, uh, the negative of the battery post is the best place. And what's going to happen is when the car is running, you're going to get a reading on this thing. Now what you need to do when you get that reading, let's say, let's throw an example up there. We'll do two examples and I'll do a little more explanation. When you get on there, you're going to see, we'll say 17 hertz, right? Eh. We'll round it. I'm not doing this with a calculator. We'll say you see 30 hertz. You're a little bit above idle, but whatever. So you're getting one spark per two RPM. So automatically, we already know we need to multiply by two. That way it's every single one of them we're accounting for. We're accounting for all the ones that are sparking and all the ones in between. So we're doubling our number, all right? Then, we have to multiply it again, because guess what? Hertz is cycles. Whoa. <laughs> no, I'm teaching. Hertz is cycles per second. What we need is we need cycles per minute. Why do we need per minute? because it's revolutions per minute. R, P, M. I'm getting terrible at writing this. Revolutions per minute. Revolutions and cycles is the same thing. So, now that we've established that we need to multiply by 60, because it's 60 seconds in every minute, this will give us our RPM at 30 hertz. So 30 hertz times two, to compensate for the cycles we skipped, where it's just the intake and exhaust stroke, where it doesn't spark, but it does spin once, and then 60 seconds times all this so that you get minutes. Now, what this is going to come out to be is this going to be 3,600 RPM. 3,600 RPM. How do we get that? When we dumb it down, completely down. Whoa, okay, so actually the whole board just disappears so we can do this a little bit quicker, right? So what we got on our reading was 30 hertz, right? How do we actually get to revolutions per minute? Well, let's break it down. What the multimeter is seeing is 30 sparks per second. Now we need to multiply by that 2. What does that represent? That represents two revolutions per spark, which we already figured that out too. Then we got our time, which is 60 seconds, 
in one minute. What that all comes out to cancel out to is we cancel out the sparks, we cancel out the seconds, and the only thing we're left with is this. 30 times 2 is 60 times 60 equals 3600. What are we left with at the top? Revolutions per being divided by, what do we have at the bottom? Minutes. We end up with 3600 RPM. That is accounting for the gaps between firing and it's also accounting for how many are hitting per minute. So now we are at cycles per minute. Revolutions per minute, RPM. Now let me show you what it looks like on the meter. Even if you don't have a meter like this, you can still go to like, we'll say Harbor Freight or Walmart or something like that. You just need a readout on it. You don't want to do this with a needle one. So what you'll do is you go into your multimeter. This one doesn't have it, but on this face right here somewhere, what you're going to see is you're going to see this little logo right here. That's going to be on your meter, okay? HZ, Hertz. And what you're going to do is you're going to select it, and that's what it's going to show on your meter, is that little logo right there, or that little indicator or annotation for it. And all you're going to do is you're going to hook that up, just like this up here. You're going to probe one of those wires, get on Google, get on YouTube, something, figure out for your car which one is tachometer. Most of the time, they're going to be on websites for car starter installs because the car starter needs to see a tack signal in order to stay running. Otherwise, it's going to think it never started the car and it's going to shut down and retry. So once you've got that part figured out and you're getting a reading on your meter right up in here, what you're going to do is you're going to come over here and you're going to do this multiplication. If you have a basic car engine, it's going to be times 120 for whatever you get on this meter. If you have a two-stroke motorcycle, what you're going to do is you're going to times it by 60 only because you don't have to compensate because it's firing on every stroke. You get a spark or you get a reading for every time it rotates. Four strokes, you only get a reading for every other time, so you have to double it so you can compensate. Or so you can technically account for the revolution that the spark is not telling you about. But we already know it works like that because it has to. And that's pretty much it. That's all you gotta do. So that 400 hour tachometer you're trying to get that you don't think is accurate, that's pretty bad considering you can go get a multimeter for about $35 at the local shop and it's never wrong. Another thing that you can do if you don't know how to hook up that probe on that wire or you can't find that wire is you can also do something like this. Let me find the eraser real quick. What you can do is there's little attachments you can get for the actual spark plug wire itself. You cannot test at the coil that distributes all the spark. Now if you have a spark plug coil, or if you have a coil pack for every cylinder, you test the coil pack. Remember, we can only test a cylinder. We cannot test the entire engine. If we test the entire engine, we have to divide the whole system by four. Why do we have to do that? Well, on a four cylinder, what you have to do is you have to sit there and account that it's firing more than one cylinder at a time. So you have to figure out the firing order of your car. It may be sequential, it may be two pistons at the same time. If you got an old school Lamborghini, you might be firing four pistons at a time. But for the sake of ease of use, if you got a four cylinder Honda Civic, you're going to test at the cylinder. If you do not have a coil pack at the cylinder, there's another way you can do it. And what it does is it has this little tiny wire that comes off. And you buy this for your multimeter. And what it has on the end of Powering it, off. Whoa, Bluetooth radio has gone nuts. You're going to come in here, and what it's going to have is it's going to have this little clamp looking thing. It's got a little spring right here. And what it's going to do is you're going to put the wire in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like this, I'm going to pinch that, and this is going to open up. So when I pinch that together, what's going to end up happening 
is it's going to sit like this. And you're going to put the wire inside that jaw. Once that thing is inside that jaw, this little sensor right here is going to clamp around. It's called a, uh, it's not Hall Effect. I'll have to look it up again. But what it does is it detects current flowing through the clamp. There's a little tiny sensor right in here that can detect when something is inside it without actually touching the wire. So you don't have to stab through the insulation or anything crazy like that. And what will end up happening is it will give a feedback and you'll get your hertz. I think these things are probably roughly around, we'll say 30 or 40 bucks. So like 100 bucks, you can test all your buddy's tachometers. You can test engine RPM. You can test the maximum RPM because most of the time on these, and actually it's on every one, see a little button right there that says min max? What you'll do is you'll turn your multimeter on. So you can essentially dyno your two-step if you wanted to. You can figure out what RPM it's kicking on and off at. What you'll do is you'll come in there and you'll hit that button that says min max. Now see how it has a difference on there? Yours, if it's a cheaper one, will say min or max up in this corner. Somewhere on here, it's going to say min or max. It's not going to have both unless it's a process meter like this one. And what you'll do is it'll tell you the highest frequency it sees while it's recording. And what you'll get out of it is that system will sit there and show you the, hard, the fastest your engine went and the slowest your engine went. And there you go. You have your own. Who's got the highest RPM? Dyno for cheap. And that's pretty much it. If you got any other questions, leave them down in the comments. I can answer them. I don't have a ton of videos up, as you've noticed. I got five subscribers. We'll get there, people. We will get there. This is Rob Jones with Signway Specialties. This is the first car tip and trick. We'll have many more. Until next time, see you later.